cool, light, ranty jazz on today's Unnamed Real Estate Podcast. Problem is, I got all the things to say today and none of the time to say it in. Hi there, my name is Charles Dawson. I am the sales manager and associate broker here for ProStar Realty. This is the Unnamed Podcast, episode 50. I feel like it's my diamond jubilee, you know, but uh, I'm really glad we got. <clears throat> hey, look, I actually stuck to something, right? Two more weeks, we're going to have the one year anniversary. I have no idea what the hell I'm going to do that. But it is um, January the something. I've been pretty much balls to the wall since I woke up this morning. I did take 10 minutes to watch the SpaceX launch because SpaceX, those things are always cool. I'm always watching it just to see if they stick to the landing enough nowadays. I made a comment a couple uh, couple months ago that one of these days I would like to see the space flight, you know, with the Dragon rockets and whatnot, as about as exciting as watching Southwest Airlines flight to Vegas leave. And I really think we're getting close to that. <clears throat> but for some reason, it just happened to happen. And so I could, you know, fire it up and watch it. And, but then the whole rest of the morning's just been going absolutely crazy. And I'm really booked today. I got like three or four things to do throughout the, the valley. So I came in early to get this thing recorded. And then had to um, text at tech support for probably a good 20 minutes of my life I didn't have. And we are um, transitioning over to a new system over here. It's called a KV Core. KV Core is well known in the real estate industry as, as being a customer customer relations management or a CRM system. And what it allows you to do is monitor your relationships with your customers after the closing, before the closing. And what <clears throat> this is something I don't really do. And that's something that I should have done. I should have done from day one. If I was to go through my big list of raised failures and weaknesses besides um, my crushing insecurity and my lack of stamina, the follow-up of clients is probably going to be really, really high on that list. So the, the fact that I do not call former clients every month, you know, the... You know, hi, remember me? I exist. Don't forget me. Every time you think about how much you love your house, think about me. I don't do that. All right. And I've never done that. All right. And I, I think actually starting to think a good chunk of it might have actually been my own ego. The fact that, well, that was a memorable experience. I pretty much remember every one of my clients. And I remember things about, you know, showing them houses and little things that came up that I can re relate back to you. It's like, oh, yeah, remember, remember that kitchen? Whoa, that kitchen. Um, you know, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years down the road. When you have that that kind of memory you think people just remember that experience too and they're going to think you're going to think that they're going to remember that experience if it comes time for them to sell but in reality what happens is they forgot who you are you, they're gone you're next all right they're they're off to the races so when it times for them to when they start having another real estate issue come up and they need resolution to it now it's time to sell the house now we need to uh buy a new house okay we're getting a divorce it's time for us to sell this house you know, and go our separate ways, they forget that you're the person who put them in, you put them in the house in the first place and they forget you. And so they go with somebody else. Sometimes you'll get the phone call and I get this phone call and it's like, Hey Ray. Yeah. Long time. No see. See, I'm under contract right now. Another agent, da, 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 da. And now I'm getting screwed. What can, you know, can you help me? And my response in those cases has to be no. I can't help you. I can't ethically get involved in another agent's situation. You decided to go with this person and this person you believe is screwing you. There are like things I can't say about another agent. Right? National Association of Realtors has a, a, a law there that you can get in trouble for if thou shall not speak shit about another realtor. All right. Paraphrasing. And... It, it gets you into a weird little hassle when you're sitting there and you're watching somebody just screw up a deal because they're incompetent. Asterix, every realtor 
in America is the most highly trained, highly ethical people you will ever meet. Trust me. Please. Please. This is, believe me that I'm saying this. All right. So, you know, that all being said, this new KV Core thing is supposed to help remind me to call people up, to contact people, to remind them that I exist and help you do the things, help Ray do the things that Ray has not been doing in the past, right? Which is apparently keeping in contact with people. <clears throat> so that's, a, that's the first element of it. Uh, the second element of KV Course is it has a whole bunch of various ways to get names and phone numbers and addresses so you can start reaching out to people. Um, you might have heard me talk about Zillow and Zillow has their business model of they wanted people looking at pretty houses and then giving up their personal contact information so they could turn around and sell it to a real estate agent so the real estate agent can call them up and start harassing them on the phone. That's um, That was their business model before they started starting to think they were flippers. Um, and now that they failed as flippers, they're probably going to be going back to that business model. So, but what KV Core does is it allows you to set up your own things using various technologies, various new marketing terms like click funnels and this and that and the other thing to get people's names and contact information. Do I feel dirty going this route? Yes, sort of, because I, I never wanted to be one of those agents who were doing, going down and doing little pop buys and stuff like that. And, you know, hi, well, I just brought you my branded post-it notes because I want you to stick with me or whatever kind of bullshit thing they, they come up with. Um, I actually dropped that line on a uh, training person for Kelly or Williams once and she, uh, not something else. I was like, I was saying how I hate the concept of Popeyes. I hate the concept of just going around randomly knocking on the doors of my former clients and giving them a little bullshit gift. And the example I used was, I don't want to show up with a cleaning pad you know, with my name on it and say, hey, think of me when to scrub your real estate problems away. And I was being sarcastic. She like glommed onto it. She's like, wow, actually that one's really good. I, I can see you do it. You know, you know a supplier for these, for cleaning pads? And I'm like, no, that's what I'm trying to get away of, away from. So like I said, um, agents, successful agents do this. Successful agents hound and harass and a whole bunch of, H verbs, um, former clients to make sure they get continuing bus business. Um, this is pretty much the nature of the beast. This is the way the industry is. Right? So we here at, at ProStar are starting to put something into place. I mean, it will allow us to do other things, right? I'm, and it's, it's, it's pretty, pretty cool, powerful system. I mean, I'm, I'm, I don't jazz up about a lot of uh, systems that much, but this one is really, you got me excited. Although their help desk, um, online help desk really, really, truly sucks for technical help desk reasons that I could go into for like hours and probably have. But, um, this is this is our week. This is what we're rolling at. So any of my, my um any of my clients out there who are watching this and whatnot, yeah, you're probably gonna start seeing emails from me. You you have in the last couple months or so where like I was sending you e Christmas cards and it's like I haven't sent e Christmas cards out for forever. But, you know, I just don't want you guys coming in that call going, hey, I just complete I'm get, completely getting screwed and the first words out of my mouth that I want to say is, Well, why didn't you call me first? Oh yeah, I know you saw that guy on the on the bus sign and stuff. Or oh yeah, you you know the flyers showed up in your mailbox and you just decided to go with them. Today, this morning, along the same notes, the uh, Reuters. I think it was Reuters. I was going to reread this article before I started um, um, recording. Came up with the list of industries job professions and how well they are trusted. They do this every year. It's like, how much do you trust judges? How much do you judge police officers? How much, how much do you judge nurses, doctors, you know, down to used car salesmen? And I've always heard that quoted that uh, real estate agents was on, on there. And so I'm reading the article trying to figure out how bad we scored this year. Cause I'll, I'll, I'll be honest with you. Real estate agents by as whole, when they do these surveys used to fall in somewhere between congressmen and used car salesmen. All right. And there is a reason for that. Right? And the, part of the reason for that is going back to 
Popeyes and scream, you know, cleaning up your real estate problems and not necessarily lack of ethics, but the lack of professionalism in this industry. <clears throat> and so I was really, really sitting there trying to trying trying to um, find that. And for some reason, they did not have us on, the, on that list, or at least the article I was reading didn't call that out. I'm, I'm going to do a little bit deeper dive on that because that dovetails into another conversation I have to have or want to have. I actually really do want to. It's not a half, it's a want. Um, about the public perception of realtors, particularly realtors, but real estate salespeople in general. And ultimately, I really do want to do that review of that um, comedic television show that had that one guy who was a real estate agent. And I'm, I'm repressing his name. And that's probably just, you know, for my own social sanity, you know. Um, but, you know, why do real estate agents have a poor perception in the community at large? Right. And how can we as real estate agents take steps to fix that? One of the first things off of the top of my head is that I would really like to see is remember five, ten minutes ago, I mentioned that there is a law in there in the, the underlaws of the National Association of Realtors saying we cannot talk about another realtor. Right. We can get in trouble for that, for disparaging them. In my world, it's not disparagement if true. Sorry, Steve, I just swore on the podcast. All right. I'm starting to get a little worked up here. All right. It's not, I'm not disparaging you if I'm telling you the truth about you. And if I'm letting the public know that you're a dirtbag agent, All right? Whoever you are, All right? We're not allowed to say that. Right. And one of the defensive things that I've noticed some big corporations do is they pay to be a realtor under their membership. And then they go on social media and they start stomping down all criticism of them. I mean, think, I mean, think about that. That's, that's sort of pretty cool and pretty bad at the same time. It's like, all right, the people who know somebody is wrong. All right. The people who can look at something and go, that's, uh, that's wrong behavior. That is not a good person. Think about think about if you had doctors out there, all right? And this is Bobby, okay? And Bobby really sucks as a surgeon. I mean, he's killing four out of five patients here, all right? He takes off the wrong leg, all right? Bobby's bad. Think about working in an industry where no doctor could call out Bobby and say, for the love of God, get the knife out of Bobby's hands. That's what real estate is right now. So, hey, that was fun. Okay, now I'm woke up. All right, I got my little morning jazz going on. So um, we do have Tina Tambor. I did get to talk to her. She did not. She did not give us any projections for the next year, but she did have some great information. I recorded that yesterday, uh, knowing that today was going to be busy. So we're going to go into that wrap up with the numbers. I'll hit you on the back end. Watch for the shirt change. You can tell what day uh, I'm recording, depending on what color my shirt is. See you in a bit. So let's talk about what Tina had to say. Um, this was her first um, first meeting of the uh, the year. She did not make any projections for the next year, and I'm a little disappointed in that. Um, would have been interesting to see what you know what I thought and what she thought uh, was going on and how they compared to each other. But she did wrap up uh, the rest of the year and had, had some really interesting numbers. Um, inflation ended in uh, November at 6.8. And just before I recorded this, I saw a couple of headlines saying that inflation for December uh, closed at 7. So still ticking up on that. We'll see what happens in the next couple of months. But this is definitely going to have an impact downstream on everything, especially housing. Um, Funny little thing about uh, the inflation rate is th they calculate the inflation rate based on a big bundle. You know, they use the basket of consumer goods, if, if I remember my economics classes uh, correctly. And it's food, energy, data. And when it comes to housing, they don't actually track house payments. They track rental rates. And they consider house payments a rental rate equivalent, all right? So instead of just having an overall overarching housing they're actually tracking rents on that so you can have housing increase over the rate of inflation and still not impact inflation although inflation does impact housing uh, own home ownership appreciation so just one of those little inside by baseball things um 
there's there was a conversation that uh, she basically threw out a number. And when I mean by throwing out, I mean that she took one of her primary numbers, disagreed with the methodology that they uh, created that number by, and said, okay, they do this once a year. They completely screwed up this year. I can't trust this number, so now we got a problem. And what that number was was medium household income for Arizona. Uh, the median household income for Arizona was about, I want to say like 70000 last year, household income. That's, you know, mom, dad, kids, you know, whoever's bringing in a, a paycheck goes into household income. So, and then I did not hear the number that she was disagreeing with. She just says that the new number is wrong and that it's going to impact how they do calculations this year. I sort of wish I had paid more attention to see exactly, you know, what was going on that, but I got a call like right in the middle of the, the, that I had to take right in the middle of her getting into her presentation. So I missed that. But estimating out with how house payments and stuff going with the increase that we've had last year, and we had a 31% uh, price growth increase in the core housing that we look at when we look at these things, which is a 1,500 square foot to 2,000 square foot house. And that was a 31%. So if you had a house that was inside that category in Maricopa and stuff, you could say that you appreciated 31%. Now, payments, though, went up 41%. Now, why, why is that, right? Um, it's because of this swing in interest rates that we've been seeing. So right now, <clears throat> with with the current interest rates, it would take a uh, family making $91,000 a year to afford the median house that they're talking about, the 1,500 to 2,000 square foot. That comes to a monthly payment of $2,123, so $2,123. And calculating out rents for that, the average rents in the system, the rents are still $2,195, $2,195. $2 so it is still cheaper to purchase housing than rents. So you, you, that used to be a really big, real, I mean, especially like, I want to say about 2010 through 2012, when we were really at the bottom of the market and everything. The It's cheaper to uh, buy a house than it is to pay rents. You know, it's always been that way, uh, at least since I've been licensed. Um, the ultimately at the end of the day, you're, you're going to pay a mortgage, right? It's whether or not you're paying your mortgage or the landlord's mortgage. So that shows that increase. She did not come out and say what she thought next year is going to increase is going to be, all right? I think I said 12, I think 12% is, is pretty, and that might actually be conservative, but I, I really do think the economy is going to start slowing down right now with that 7% interest. Um, Unemployment figures, uh, she did cover those. We are actually recovered to pre-COVID numbers, which is good. So from an employment standpoint, we are over that. However, remember, that means that we've just lost a year and a half of growth, effectively. That's um, um, an example that a, a friend of mine used to use is that when your boss suddenly decides to say, hey, we can't make um, cost of living increases this year, so nobody gets a raise, but we'll make it up next year. Right. And then next year they come and instead of giving you the 2% you know, cost of living, they give you like a three. Oh, we made it up. No, actually they didn't right? because a good cost of living to actually make it up would have been four plus because remember, cumulative. Right? Um, so we are recovered payroll rise. We are recovered employment wise, but now we have cost of living impacting. Now to buy a medium house, you got to make $91,000 a year household. So you're going to start seeing that slow up. Um, we also saw a slower permit growth in fourth quarter, primarily because of the inability to get things to build houses with. Builders are projecting out, all right, it, there is taking them 10 to 14 months to build a new house from permit to keys. So do not think that in here this summer you're going to go, oh, let's just go, let's go get a new house and let's plan on moving in August, all right? If you wanted to move in in August, you needed to order that um, house two months ago. Right? This is the way the new supply changes. I'm buying a new truck, all right? I went out there, I went down to the dealership and ordered a truck that I'm not going to see for upwards of 12 weeks out, all right? That truck isn't even built yet, all right? 
but you got to get your order in so they can get allocate the parts to put your truck together. And hopefully when the truck comes and I drive it off the lot, all the parts that are supposed to be there are going to be there. I'm a little concerned about that. But... Well, you know, this is this is our, our the effect of inflation, supply chain, employment, everything that we've been having going on for the last six months. This is what we're seeing on that. Um, a couple other little, you know, um, metrics and stuff she talked about. She said that um, we looked at a lot about the counties and people who are moving in. Now, a couple for a couple of weeks now, I've been st talking about blue states leaving going to red states and I kept mentioning Oregon and Washington so I want to I want to um, correct something I've been saying yes they are leaving California yes they are leaving Illinois yes they are leaving pretty much all of New England yes they are leaving Washington DC yes they are leaving Louisiana which is really interesting I want to know why Louisiana is imaging people but Oregon and Washington are not losing people they are still technically in the growth side they they i think oregon came down to where they had like a thousand more people than the last time they ran the census there so they're they're almost at equilibrium on that but um all the other states we come in we now have san diego is now a, a, one, the number four um county that is sending i don't know if san diego county is can county or if it's a separate county that san diego is in but they're now number four after L.A., Orange County, and Cook County, Chicago, they are now the number fourth uh, county sending us uh, people. So, and the other thing that she mentioned I thought was really interesting is that 68% of people inbound into Maricopa County are making over $100,000, right, household income. So... That means we have the people who are coming in who can afford to buy these houses that you need to make $91,000 a year. And that might be a reason why that whole thing just bumped up because we got these people who can come in and they can afford to buy here. And they can afford to bid against each other. Um, the other thing is that people who do leave Maricopa, because believe it or not, people do you know are leaving Maricopa, 47% of them are over the age of 65. Which sounds a little weird because we were supposed to be a retirement community until you realize that these are the people who are leaving to go live near the grandkids or to live near family. And as soon as she mentioned that, I thought of at least three different listings and uh, sellers I helped sell their house who were all in that t age frame and they were all leaving the state. And it was just those reasons. Want to be near closer to family. Want to be closer to the grandkids. You know, whatever those reasons. So we still got churn. Remember. We just got more people coming in than we got going out. The people that are going out, 47% of them are older. Um, another question that came up um, is constantly, she's always asked, what's a normal market? What's a normal market? All right? We have, and we're going to see here on the numbers here that I'm going to run right after this, about 5,500 active listings. We actually go down. Um What's the normal supposed to be? She said that estimated active, if we'd had normal supply, we'd be between 16,000 and 21,000 active listings. Right? And we're down here at, at 5,500. And a lot of that has to, you know, has to do with we are not building enough houses. Right? Those new builds are taking 10 to 14 months. California is still moving here. Chicago is still moving here. All of, all of these um, issues are coming up. I don't see how we actually get back to 16. We would literally need to have every house that was projected to be on. Um, that, okay, I've only had like three cups of coffee today, so the brain cells aren't really firing. And I also just had a uh, hamburger for lunch, so um, blood sugar issues going on over here. Um, but when we were talking about all those houses that were on forbearances and everybody who wasn't making mortgage payments, and we're all worried about that coming in in a huge surge, right? That was about 10,000, right? The numbers that we were finally looking at is the way they're coming off is like, at worst that could happen is 10,000 houses are suddenly going to get foreclosed on and 90 days later, they're going to wind up on the market. That would put us back to normal if that had happened, right? Because look at the numbers that we saw last, last week. Right. We transacted more houses than ever. Right. She came up and she solidified that 2021 the more houses were transacted in Maricopa County than ever before. That sort of puts paid the whole concept of, oh, sellers just aren't selling. 
<clears throat> that might be you know something to believe but enough sellers are selling their properties enough builders are building their properties to make last year the best ever seriously right, but what's happening is there's so many buyers the properties are coming off so fast we're not seeing the 60 90 days on market that when you have 16,000 properties sitting on the market, they're sitting out there for 60 to 90 days, right? Average days on market right now is coming off of 18 over the holidays, right? So it, we expect that to start going down because as you look at these uh, numbers, I'm going to cover on the numbers, right? We go down in active listings and we go up in every category. We have more houses being listed for the first time, right? I think, I think it goes up like 400. Check me when I, when I do the numbers report. Um, but we have houses going pending, housings going under contract, looking for backups, houses going where the buyers continue to see everything else is up because the buyers are coming out there and everybody, you know, even though we have more people putting things out for sale, more people are there to pick it up. This is our spring rush. This is how it happens every year. It's going to be really interesting to see how it happens this year when we came into this year with just about the same numbers as last year. Remember, active listings coming in we covered that last week too so um sellers um uh, conference report numbers uh the sellers score was a 28.8 the, the the buyer scores or the demand score was 22.7 so if you want to visualize it visualize that there's 123 buyers out there for every 29 houses so that's what tina had to say uh, let's go to the numbers we'll wrap up on the other side of that now the numbers for January 12th, 2022. Our actives this week are 5,506, which is down 149 from the week before. Of those, 1,911, great number there, were new listings, up 591. Our pendings were 1,791, which is up 404. Our under contracts looking for backups were 939, which is up 259. And our contracts with the buyer contingencies are 72, which is up 27 from the week before. We had 1,753 closings, which is down 374. And coming soon to an MLS near you is 788 new listings. So that's going to wrap it up for this week. Um, if for those of you guys who stay through the credits, you're going to notice that we're going to have a new ProStore logo at the end. Something else that just um, hit the fan this week, and we're having to update everything out there with the old logo, put the new logo on, which is always a lot of fun. You you never realize how many places you put your logo and how many things it's embedded in until you get to the you know you start having to comb through everything and get rid of it. But um, yeah, um, numbers are really interesting. I, I really wanted to call something out that even though we're seeing the active listing numbers go down, it's because here comes the buyers. The, all those buyers who say, no, let's wait until next year are kicking off. I mean, we, we are getting a lot more sellers coming in. You can see that on the on the new listings. All right, new listings are going up, but they're coming off faster than they are going in. Um, Tina always uses a, uh, this example of a bathtub. And you have a faucet going into the bathtub and you have a drain coming out of the bathtub. And, you know, you get more listings when less water is coming out through the drain and you get, you know, less listings when less water is coming in than it's coming out. And we're, we're just at the point where, yeah, the faucet just got turned up, but hey, so is the drain and the drain is still pulling everything out. And we're, we're going to look at that. We project this year out the, the way last year and everything goes out. We're, I don't think we're going to see 10,000 active listings at any one time, short of something major financially happening. Um, I think I mentioned it on it is that uh, December's uh, inflation rate came in at seven. I do know that the um, the lending market is already starting to adjust to that. The Fed did something last week that has kicked rates up. We are quite possibly headed, you know, to that four four percent interest rate or, or more um, by the end of the year. I, it's really funny. Hey, annual projections, you know, two days later. Oh, crap. We're halfway to them already. But we'll, we'll see um, how that plays out. So next week is going to be, um, don't know. I haven't thought that far ahead. I so, uh, got a lot of KV Core rollout to do. Got a lot of agents onboarding onto that system. Um, Im implementing new systems like this are always a lot of fun, and there's always a lot of little moving parts that people don't realize that they're there until they get there. Um, but definitely, um, 
my one year anniversary, we're going to do, I don't know, maybe we'll do like the best of me. We'll just sit there and like, I'll come through everything and find my, my greatest rants and, and whatnot. And we'll just do a, like a highlight reel of, you know, times Ray lost his I, okay, so you guys noticed now that I said that I'm really freaking profane this early in the morning. So, you know, maybe it's be better if I do record in the in the afternoons when I'm a little bit more tired and a little bit less caffeinated. So let's see what happens next week. Thank you very much for watching and enjoy your weekend. Be safe out there. Talk to you guys later.